Um, and uh, about three, uh, we, we started Terra, like actually kind of informally started in December, 2019. We did not know the pandemic was coming then. Uh, and I met my co-founder Anshuman, who is our CEO then. And when we met, uh, he, to, he shared, a, we were trying to, we were bouncing around ideas and he shared, he has a completely different background for me. So I've been in the environment space forever. He came from a tech entrepreneurship background. He had successfully started uh, several companies. The last company he started had become a huge, like NASDAQ listed 4,000 people company. So um, he, when he came, when he and I got started, he had already been thinking about climate for a while. And he found it very hard to figure out how to apply his skills. So he had spent a while trying to make sense of this, like, you know, online and searching for information. And he just couldn't figure out how do his skills apply? And then the other thing he noticed was that it was once he had switched on to being interested in climate, he didn't have a community of people to talk to about it. The rest of his community was not as interested. And so he was lacking a community of people to engage with around this. And so we thought, well, if he's got this problem, it must be a problem that's much more widespread. So we decided, why don't we start a company that solves for this problem, that creates an on-ramp for people who are interested, curious in working in climate and, and actually shifting their careers into climate. So that was literally the origin story of this course. So the very important thing to know about this course is that it's very action oriented. The whole goal of this course is for you to find your space in climate action. That's what we want to do with you in this course. We want you to, we want to help you find your spot. Um, and it's a very, very open course. It's diverse. The group is extremely diverse. They come from, all our fellows come from many countries um, and uh, all kinds of, literally every career under the sun, people come from all walks of life. So we've designed this course to work for all of you. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the course in a minute, but I want to just hand over to Kirti to introduce herself. Thanks so much, Kamal. Hi, I'm Kirti Manyan, Community Manager at Terra. I've been managing community at Terra over the last three years. No climate background. So it has been a fantastic and just kind of steep learning curve for me, very frankly. Uh, you know the thing where you say I'm doing something bigger than myself? Sounds so cliche, but it's exactly what's kind of happened for me in my career. Um, I want to thank all of you personally for kind of coming along to this open house. Community forms the secret sauce of our Learning for Action program. People are invested to solve this problem, not afraid to get their hands dirty. Um, and I think it's very, very critical in how you kind of come together to to actually take up this program as well. Um, I'll, I'll tell a little bit more about community mentorship as we kind of go along. Uh, enough about me, I think coming back to you. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, let me just give you a, a quick overview to how this program is organized and what is the, what are the core elements. So um, we have a, so the, when we think about like sustainability transition, like transitioning your whole career into sustainability. Um, and by the way, some folks come from sustainability, they're just trying to get deeper into, into climate specifically. Uh, we, uh, we think of it as organized around three fundamental pillars. Like in order to be able to switch into this work, you need skills and knowledge. That's one thing. You need community. This is so important. And I'm going to hand back to Kirti, therefore, to talk about it. We invest a lot in community. This community that we have at Terra will be extremely valuable to you in finding jobs, in getting support, in just kind of talking about climate anxiety, um, all kinds of support. We are fundamentally a caring community. We have designed for care and support. This is really absolutely central to what we do and your entire experience of this course will be grounded in that. So we have, there's a lot of knowledge that you will gain and I'll, I'll, I'll let my fellows, let the fellows talk about that. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on community and then we also, a focus on emotional resilience because as people get deeper and deeper into climate, I guarantee you're going to get more anxious. You're probably already anxious about climate, which is why you're here. Um, you're trying to transition your career. That's very anxiety provoking. So we also work on emotional resilience. Um, I used to work uh, in, a, in a school in Hawaii called Sikhs. It was a middle school, the school for examining essential questions of sustainability. And that entire school, the whole curriculum was designed around what, that's known, what are known as sustainability skills. And our course borrows a little bit from that. And we've added other sustainability skills. So 
were very intentionally designed around the sustainability skills. Um, I, I don't want to go into any great detail right now because I, I, I want to stop talking and hand over to others, uh, but I'm happy to answer questions about that later. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'll stop talking. Um, I will see if Kriti wants to add something about community and mentorship. Uh, I can, Kriti, should I do a little bit about the structure of the program, all the different components? Is that helpful? Yes, I think. Okay. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about like what your experience of a week is like. So these are all the elements. So the first thing is, even though we admit large cohorts, you will be put in a small group of no more than 20 to 25 fellows. Um, and this group will be cared for by one skilled instructor. We invest a lot in training our instructors. We have amazing instructors that come from all walks of life, like everything from a director at Tesla to academics to like just incredible range of highly skilled people who are our instructors and your instructor will be your support essentially they will help you in various ways they'll be available for one-on-one -on -one chats with you um, they will be running these things called labs so let me tell you a little bit about a life like the, a week in your in the course so on on mondays and wednesdays we'll release something called a class this is content this is something that you will go through on your own we have a really nice multimedia format we design it's designed into short sort of all the content is now in the form of short modules that you can kind of bite-sized modules there's little quizzes multiple choice quizzes you can take they're not required they're for your own learning so there's this content monday and wednesday that's on your own once a week, you will be in a lab. This is the only required live session you have to attend. And you, you will be put into a lab based on your time zone and your availability. So we'll make sure that it works for you and your time zone. And that's the only live session you are absolutely, like we really want you to attend. And that's run by your instructor. It touches on the topics of the week. Um, and there's a lot of like interesting activities, et cetera, we do in the labs. There's also something called a deep dive lab, which is an expert led lab on the topics of that week. If you want to really go deeper into that particular topic, um, that is optional. We also once a week have a guest talk. That is also, we, uh, we encourage people to attend live because you get to do Q and A with the speaker directly. But again, everything is recorded. Every live session is recorded and available to you if you're not able to make it. We understand everybody's busy. Most of you are working, have jobs. And so we really try to make it work around your schedules as well. Um, so there's content, there's labs, there's deep dive labs, there's guest talks. Um, there's a lot of like more informal community meetups that happen as well. Um, and then around this, and then there's five big assignments five big assignments some of these are group assignments some are just individual assignments and you will be the whole point of the assignment is the assignments like is to help you focus on your career like whatever it is that you want to get out of this course the assignments really focus on getting you there so it's a structured way for you to basically figure out exactly what you want to do in this space and how you're going to do it um uh, plenty of our fellows like the majority successfully transition into climate work uh, in about six, sometimes it takes a while like it can take up to six months after graduating we also have a very focused careers course for people who are job seekers four weeks additionally available to you for free after you finish um for those who really want extra support there and we have an amazing mentorship program and i'll hand over to kirti again to just talk a little bit about the community and mentorship elements thanks so much kamal um, I think with community, there's enough scope for networking, one to one interactions. We do social, so it's not all sh shop talk all the time. Uh, mentorship, especially, forms a key part of how the course functions. Uh, two parts of this one, interaction with seasoned climate professionals, including alumni, and then formal interaction with climate experts. This allows you access to folks, their experiences, you can learn from it and you kind of move ahead in your own climate journeys. So, it's, um, typically, we introduce mentorship roughly around the six or seventh week, which is when we feel you're ready to kind of chat with folks as well. But the new book just launching actually in the next couple of weeks is something called Open Door Climate. I don't know if you're aware of it, but that's something we're all excited about and, and kind of bringing it forward to you all to get you to interact with um, more folks in the ecosystem, so to speak. Um, I, I think that's it for me. Do we want to kind of get the alumni uh, started? Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's hand over to Sharvari first because I think she has to take off early. So Sharvari, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. uh, Sharvari is a alum of Etera. Thank you for being here. Over to yeah. you. Yeah, thanks, Kamal, for asking me to share my experience here. 
Hi, this is Shavari. I'm from Pune, India. And uh, I would like to tell about myself a little bit. I'm an engineer and did my management degree. And then I worked in uh, banking sector and IT sector for almost 10 to 12 years. Um, my journey related to climate, I mean, the, the thought came into mind in my mind in 2009 when I traveled all over India to Jagriti Yatra. But that point of time, I could not uh, get those thoughts in a practically or uh, uh, for in, I mean, I haven't implemented that thought uh, in practical way. And then uh, just if you go go back to uh, 2022, at that point of time, I was uh, exploring uh, blockchain technology. I got connected with a person who wanted to implement something related to climate tech and agri tech. And at the same time, I joined <laughs> Terra.do uh, app. So I started uh, going through sessions on Terra.do app. And at the same time, around September, October, I joined LFA program. So I, I got a scholarship also for that uh, because I was uh, exploring all these things. Uh, I left my job earlier and I was exploring the new technology area and somehow got connected with this person. Current And the experience with the LFA is like, I, I got a community. I, I talked to the people all over the world from global north, global south, and especially attend. I, I like those sessions by um, uh, uh, Mr. Fletcher and then uh, certain sessions related to donut economics. Though I was basically, currently I'm working on decarbonization solutions using blockchain technology and uh, uh, also working on supply chain in agri uh, agriculture. Uh, but uh, that was the main part when I started to work on. But after joining LFA, uh, the, my thinking horizon was widened. Uh, my perspective was widened because it is not only about implementing climate solutions uh, for a certain problem. It is about your communication. It is about climate justice. Why the problem is first of all in place. I was not aware of that, frankly speaking, because that was not my domain before this uh, before 2022. So I got into domain server side, I joined LFA and it actually enriched me with a lot of knowledge and a lot of perspective around climate. Uh, after that, uh, I, I was able to gather the community in Pune. Uh, we met up in person informally. Uh, I think that was the first time when Pune community uh, was got, got together. Uh, so, and the... Actually, for every lab session, I always look for, forward to the all those uh, cohort participants, uh, the group which I had been into. So I always used to look for those lab sessions because every time we used to get something from everyone. It is not about a learning. It is like a co-learning uh, with different thoughts uh, from different sides of the world. Uh, because I'm from Global South, so I have a certain thought in my mind for global north but it actually uh, uh, broke my assumptions when i when i had discussions with the global north because global north uh, we used to think in a different way but that was not the same uh, uh, because people from global north also used to think in my way also so somehow that broken my uh, assumptions in my mind related to those people and uh, yes, it helped me a lot. Now also, I'm going through the course because a lot of links are there, which I haven't gone through that time. Uh, so it is actually helping me to keep me updated about this uh, climate thing. So that's, of, uh, that's all from my end. Uh, and now I'm working on these solutions. So uh, we will be uh, launching a product in next one or two months and working on a carbon management platform along with supply chain remote sensing and everything else. Thanks. Thank you so much, Alvary. Thank you for those, uh, thank you for all those detailed, yeah, kind words as well. Um, I am going to invite Rich and then Gita to, to speak. Hi, I'm Rich Meyer. I um, spent the last 20, 25 years working at UC Berkeley uh, doing overseeing large IT projects, and I'm trying to come from that space and moving into trying to apply my skill set over into climate. And I wanted to get a a good environmental framework around how to do that. Um, 
I think one of the things you'll, you just heard from that last presentation is, is there's acronyms and terms and language that's thrown out all over the place from all sorts of perspectives. And unless you understand what those mean, you're not going to um, be able to digest all this information coming in from climate. So as, as come off, put in there, LFA is our term for learning for action. That's the course. You learn here about the global north and global south. But a lot of what you get in this in this class is you get sort of a larger framework of this information is coming in from all these different lenses from all over the place in the news. And um, the question is, how do you interpret those across the various sectors around the world? And in, unless one of the things the course does, it really opens you up to the breadth of the range of what climate change uh, encompasses and then how they interrelate to each other and how you can make them and say, oh, this impacts this, which impacts this. It's a much more complicated system uh, and ecosystem than you realize as you learn the breadth of what this is. And then as you learn about that, you realize if I impact this, I have to think about all these other arenas that it might have a ripple effect. So it's a really, really helpful framework around which you, you get a lot of the language and understanding of the semantics and the terminology. And then when you go make decisions about that, it's really helpful to understand um, where those things might have implications and impact. Um, it, it both challenges your assumptions in a lot of areas and then also allows you to kind of think through, well, if this, it prepares you to think about the impact of how things might uh, uh, be affected in the future if you if you touch one section of this, uh, of this uh, in this world. So it's really, really helpful to get that larger framework and then be able to understand the various pieces of news and information that's coming in. I think the second thing that it was highlighted was the, the fact that it's really, really difficult to make this transition or to move in this space without a community. They've worked really hard at building access to people and to the community. They give you access to mentors. They give you access to job fair. There's all sorts of things built in uh, that without that community support makes it really, really difficult to move forward in this space. And it's really, really critical to have a group of people that, to come back to to be able to process. And they give you the tools to be able to do that. So it was a really, really helpful course. One of the best things I've done. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate your words. Um, Gita, over to you. You're on mute, Gita. I always do this. Uh, sorry, guys. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Kamal and Kirti, for this opportunity. Uh, wonderful course. I completely echo with uh, what Shadwari and Rich were talking about the course and how amazing it was. Uh, just to give you a background about what I do and where I come from, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm running a, a farm to fork marketplace called Farmizin out of India. Uh, I've been running this for about six years now with two other co-founders. So I'm in the regenerative agriculture space already. My company basically connects consumers to regenerative farmers, farmers involved in natural farming, right? So I'm already sort of in this space. But for me, uh, why I got into the LFA program essentially was to understand more about the different facets of climate change. Because I just, uh, when we started out Farmizin, we started it out not from an angle of climate change, but more from an angle of uh, what do we do about the chemicals in our food, right? And uh, how can we get access to safe food? So that's where we came from. And we didn't know much about climate change, but we knew that, yes, this is good for the earth and this is good for the ecosystem. And that's when, once we got into it is when we started to learn more. For me, my knowledge was limited to my domain of agriculture, right? And uh, the climate change aspects of the other, the other aspects or of other domains were something were alien to me. And um, I knew my knowledge was rudimentary at best. So I would go to conferences or I would talk to people and I would not understand jargon or terminology. And even if I try to research things on my own and try to understand stuff, some of the terminology would just get lost on me. So I, just like what Kamal said in the introduction that Amshuman felt the same way that he, he had to reach out or read a lot of different information because it was not available in one spot. Um, it was the same thing with me. I could not understand where to begin really to read about climate change because I was hearing a lot of 
bars, but I didn't know how they're all connected. So for me, the LFA program was like a crash course in climate change, right? Because you're, you're talking about the various aspects of it. And like Rich said, you're, you're also seeing the interconnectedness of it all, because you're talking about various things like energy or renewable energy sources, technology, agriculture, different things. And you're also seeing the interconnectedness and you're also seeing the social aspect of things. And what I love about the course is that you don't need to be, um, uh, you don't need to be an expert, nor do you need to be someone who has even a working knowledge of climate change. It could be someone completely new, has no idea and could start learning things. At the same time, you could be a sort of an expert and still get a lot out of the course. The way it's structured is that if you need to just bite a little bit of it and understand the big picture, you still can. But if you want to delve deep into it, uh, go to all the deep dive classes, learn a little more, click on all the links, there's always information available to you um, if you want to go deeper and deeper. Uh, so the class, the course was absolutely like rocking and I would look forward to it every week. And I would look forward to all the assignments as they were very challenging and made me actually think because many times we don't step back, take that time off to think what we really want to do next. For me, it was a nice nudge uh, to start thinking in that direction of what I really want to do next. Uh, so I got a lot of ideas from the course for my startup. And I got to talk to a lot of uh, people. So one was definitely the course. Two was all the, uh, the entire cohort because we had such a wide range of people from different backgrounds, different countries. So it, uh, and the problems that were, they were facing were a lot of them were similar and a lot of them were very different. So it was good to get that global perspective on things from uh, everybody. And also because a lot of assignments were group assignments and we had to work with each other, understand each other's cultures, uh, problems that they were facing. So I think that was also great. Uh, and the third thing, of course, is this whole network that you've built, right? And it's there for life. Like Kamal mentioned, the course is there for life. And I see myself going back to the course every now and then and saying, okay, let me read up more on this. Hey, uh, I have a conference that I'm going to, which is about this. Let me read up a little more on this because it's going to give me uh, information very succinctly. Uh, so the network has been amazingly helpful. We've had, I live in Bangalore in India. And uh, we had offline sessions and meetups too, where we all met up, uh, amazingly diverse group of people. We stay connected on WhatsApp. We uh, have uh, meetups every now and then. Uh, so that's been great. And uh, I'd like to just talk about the mentoring program. So you have these amazing mentors on the Terra platform who you can reach out to, who are, you know, who are CEOs, who are entrepreneurs, who are, who are working, say, for the UN, places like that, right, who are in high spots. So uh, I wanted to know about how I could consult for maybe, you know, just do a small consulting role for the UN. And I could connect with and have a half an hour session with Rosita, uh, who's one of the mentors, who works for uh, UNDP. So uh, if not for um, the LFA program, I wouldn't have been able to connect with her and have this really uh, amazing conversation that, that I had. She gave me uh, very key inputs of how I could apply, where I could apply, what kind of roles would be suitable, what could I do, what, what I would probably not fit in. So it was like a very realistic kind of a, a session, plus I stay connected with her, she's helping me. So I'm also connecting to other mentors on the course. Uh, for me, this has been like one of the best things I've done in 2023. Uh, and in the last, maybe in the last couple of years. So it's been a complete, uh, awesome, awesome experience for me. Thank you so much, Geeta. And the one thing I want to call out, and maybe you have all noticed, is that part of what makes this an amazing experience is just the fellows that you will be with. Like here are three folks who just represent that. Uh, really, this community um, is, is the secret sauce of what makes it so amazing. Um, so thank you so much Kita and Rich and Sharvari. Uh, I am happy to take questions. Kirti, anything you want to add? I know that Sharvari, you have to jump off and Kirti, you do as well. So just seeing if you want to add anything, Kirti. Yeah, I just think that uh, you 
I, I think if you're already in climate or you're just starting out, I think the course is an excellent way to kind of just gather all this information in. The community is kind of holds you together really strongly and then lets you figure out what your trajectory might look like. So I think, you know, use this opportunity. Uh, please ask Kamal all the questions in the world. You should be more than happy to answer. But I think it's an excellent opportunity to kind of learn more about yourself as well, very honestly, uh, and how you fit within the ecosystem. So, you know, feel free to kind of like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see for another five minutes maybe and like, yeah, open the questions for sure. Yeah, sure. So maybe it's been a nice small group. If you just like raise your hand, I can call on you uh, and uh, we can just do, yeah, Q&A that way. We answered everyone's questions. Oh, there we go. Laurie. Yes, thank you. This is really great. And I love hearing from the fellows. This is really inspiring. I was wondering if you. No, oh, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. You went I just saw in the sorry, I just saw in the chat about the local ambassadors. Could you talk a little bit of, more about what that is? And because this is um I've I've attended some of the the job um the job fairs and that kind of thing, but this is the first time I'm actually hearing um from people with inside the community. So this is really helpful. If you could just talk a little bit more about um the Teradu team and kind of the ambassadors, that would be awesome. Yeah. So just to just to keep it in context, everybody's an ambassador is from the the LFA alumni essentially, right? People sign up and the idea there's there's two or three parts to this. One is that we have a community ambassador program, we've got a local ambassador program. We're launching with Open Door Climate as well. I don't want to confuse people with too many terms. I'm doing that already. I'm so sorry about that. But local ambassador program is very, very uh, inclined at local meetups, right? That's like our first get-go. What's kind of happening in these cities? Uh, just organizing for people to kind of come together. And this is both across alumni, fellows, and the app ecosystem. So for us, I think it's very critical that everyone kind of comes together, figures out where they're at, and the networking thing is obviously very, very helpful as well. And I think as, as the world is kind of moved on away from the pandemic bit as well, I think it's become very important way to kind of make those connections. That's the local ambassador program. With the community ambassador program, they form a critical one kind of bridging this gap, right? Uh, and kind of saying, okay, we, we've done the course. How do we kind of connect with people who are just figuring out what those first steps are? So that's where the community ambassadors play a role as well. And the last is Open Door Climate, which is launching, and I think it will probably be up. I, I don't want to go into too much detail about it, but just look out for it. It'll be up on the desktop as well as the mobile app. Just kind of something to look for. And there's very much a system of having one-to-one -one conversations between people, and this includes fellows, alumni, mentors, and, and everybody else is kind of, you know, has a background in climate, so to speak. So just calling that out. I hope that was helpful and not like too much information. Any other questions? Uh, I put in the chat. We have a discount code for this week since it's Earth Day this weekend. Just Earth twenty for straight twenty percent off, and then we do have scholarships. So if you have financial needs, there's a place in the form for you to indicate that. Um, any other questions? I don't know if the fellows want to talk about how much time they spent individually oh, yeah. on the course. So that might be a good way to kind of just understand. Maybe Rich, do you want to go first? Yeah, I probably put about eight to 10 hours a week into the course. Um, and I think it's just probably highlighted. It's not, you're not going to fail the course unless you don't exert any effort. A lot of the course is more around reflection and thinking through how, digesting what it is you're taking and reflecting. So it's more a matter of you taking the time to personally reflect and think about how you impact or integrate into the world. So it's not uh, 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 answer these questions and you get it right sort of course. It's more about how do I fit? What does this make? How does this make sense? And how do you connect it? But it took about six to eight hours. Uh, it was, they give you time estimates for each of the modules. They're pretty accurate. And, um, and uh, you can get a sense of how to plan your week in terms of doing that. Um, and then I, I would say that as they talk about the structure of the course, the modules themselves are sort of your self-initiated time frame. It's sort of you taking in the lecture, if you will, to the various modules. Um, but you should have those read through so you can be able to interact at the time where you have your your lab, where you're able, that's where you kind of process it with your other teams. 
And then toward the end of the week, you sort of have a place where you can take what you've digested and processed and say, okay, wait a minute, how does this really work over here? And that's where you get into the into the deep dive lab that kind of allows you to follow up. So you're actually going through a, a process of digestion as you are trying to think through the various things. But it takes about six data or eight to ten hours a week for me. Great. Um, I'll just quickly ask Gita to also just talk on like how long it took her, and then I see there's a couple of questions again. Yeah, same. Uh, I think uh, Rich answered it beautifully that it takes that uh, it sort of you digest the content over the week. So for me, uh, too, it took about eight to ten hours per week. Uh, of course, it's that three hours that you spend uh, for the labs, the deep dives, and the uh, sessions, but. Uh, uh, then for the classes, it would be about four to five hours. Um, yeah, and, and the best part was you could do it at your pace and when you had the time, so you didn't have to. So I typically log in um, in the night and read all my course material. So it was great. Thanks, Gita. Uh, Kim, you have a question? Yeah, thank you so much, Kumal. And thank you all um, for sharing your experiences. Um, Rich answered it, my question somewhat, but I guess I, I apologize, I missed the beginning, your intro, and you might have addressed that um, in the beginning, but my question was about um, the project work, like if you could maybe speak a little bit more to um, the labs or project work and what that might look like or involve. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to talk a little bit about that, but then I'll also ask maybe Rich and Geeta to talk a little bit about the assignments. So uh, the, the you know, the graduation requirements. So when we say project work, uh, there's really these five assignments. Uh, they are kind of written assignments actually, but they can also be video. Uh, there's different formats for them. Um, and those assignments are very much focused on, well, because the group is so diverse, uh, those assignments is where your personal, kind of ambitions and context and it's you get a chance to think through and process the content and the stuff that's going on in the labs through the context of your own skills your own ambitions and your own local context so that's like the five that's kind of the main graduation requirement is that you just submit you complete these assignments and a few of them are group assignments uh, because part of like actually working on climate is working well collaboratively. So we are, so yeah, that's part of like what we want you, to, we, we have designed it for that purpose. Um, there's no other like projects as such. There's a lot of people who have personal projects of like applying to jobs and stuff. And so like, then there's like small support groups around that. And like, there's other, you know, so people can have their own projects. A lot of them involve applying for jobs and, and we run things like CV workshops and all this other support around just the jobs side of it, the jobs fairs, et cetera. Um, I will ask Rich, uh, Gita first, and then Rich maybe to speak to like just to describe like one assignment that you you got you got something out of you felt was like a interesting assignment. Right. So for me, um, so there were five assignments like Kamal said in total. Out of which uh, two were group assignments, and uh, three were I think individual assignments. Uh, the group assignments were great as well because we had a chance to interact with three or four people in a group from different countries talking about a single problem, right? So, uh, so one of the assignments involved uh, selecting a, a problem area or, or a solution area within the climate space and then going deeper into it and looking at what the problem statement was, what the solution is, et cetera, and coming together, researching a bit on that. Um, so we did, I, I chose something which was, uh, which I had no clue about, earlier marine ecosystems. So our group did marine ecosystems together. So uh, it was a great experience, sort of very, um, uh, for, you know, a knowledge intensive sort of an experience to go through the entire process of researching out what happens in a marine ecosystem, what are the, the, what are the factors that affect climate change, uh, what are the new research that's coming out of the space. Um, so that was very interesting for me. For, and, Plus for me, the last assignment was key uh, because that was an assignment to work on the paths that you've sort of chosen for your future. Is it careers? Is it a career stream that you're taking? Or are you going to work on creating something within the space that you're in? 
if you're in a job already in the climate space or if you're in a job what could you do within the climate space in your job or what could you do if you run a company for me because uh, i run a company it was what i could do more which could be a climate angle uh, to, in my company so uh, so that was a very interesting assignment as well yeah so these two would stand out for me for sure which thank you, you gita yeah and just to clarify that that yeah that last assignment is like your personal work plan so we kind of like are to hold, like really get you to really think okay this is like my launch plan like this is exactly what i'm going to do these are the organizations i want to work for these are the people i'm going to speak to this is why i think i want to do this like there's a structured way for you to like really like narrow that down and you know commit commit to something um it reach really over to you. you too it really gets you to think i i in fact i have the plan printed out and stuck so it's like a reminder to me every day because that that is something i was unable to sort of uh, sit and do all you know in the last couple of years it gave me that opportunity to in a structured way plan these things uh, and i've done I've made so much progress on on that already so tell you about it yes rich Okay. Yeah, I will say again, this is not a pass fail class. This is about springboarding you to the next step. So like, I think an interesting one was the very first assignment was assignment to dream, right? If you could look ahead 20 years from now, where did you see yourself in this process? What did you do? Who were your allies? What was your legacy? What was your impact? Can you dream? Can you think about what that future looks like and look backward? And so that's not a pass fail. That's a, can I open my imagination? Can I look forward? So that, but that sets the course. So that sets the framework for how you're even entering the course. But then you get to this place where you've got this assignment that was mentioned a second ago, where you have to work with teammates and say, okay, I have to go deep dive into a sector. Oh my gosh, I don't know about the sectors. Well, they prep you and they've already got you into this instance of what are the sectors broken out into? And you got to, Okay, I got to just pick one of these and and then figure out what the next stage I need to go look into. And you realize this is deeper than I thought. There's more information than I thought. But again, it's a springboard to figure out. Oh, there's a lot to look into here. What metrics would I think about? What graphs do I need to understand? How do I interpret this? And then you do that with other people internationally, and you realize, oh my gosh, your perspective is completely different. You mean in Belgium they do it like that? Why do they do it like that in Argentina? And all of a sudden you realize my local context is so important. So these aren't meant to be pass fail. They're meant to be springboards that open you up to broader senses of perspective and that systemic thinking. And so again, they, they lead you down a path to help you understand where do I want to participate? What do I want to do? But it, it really, it, it's challenging. They're strong nudges, they're good springboards, but they're not meant to be a shaming pass fail process. It's meant to be, okay, how do I take this down the path and how do I further move down that path? Thank you, Rich. Yeah, um, so I see we have a question from Carl and then Jocelyn. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity to ask a question here. It's, it's the the uh, course sounds uh, extremely interesting. I have a question though about um, if, so in a scenario where you may have like many years experience in a certain discipline which could be applied to climate and the thing is you don't know like like where exactly you want to apply it it sounds like the, co the course will help you um, get some clarity on that but one of the things I'm seeing is that the type of jobs I see out there uh, in this area uh, tend to have at least you know, certainly the ones I'm looking at tend to be quite exacting in how much experience you have, you know, you know, five years ESG reporting, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, I can, I can come up with many, many examples. And I fear that, well, I, I, I'd be hopeful to find uh, more, more precisely where, where I might be able to fit my experience in, but then uh, find that when I look in, you know, for the opportunities that correspond to that, I'll still be faced with the same issue that are essentially, yes, I mean, you, you, so you have the discipline, experience and skills and whatever, but you don't have the domain experience to contribute um, in this area 
at least at, you know at the I'm not so I'm not proclaiming that I can do so at a very advanced level right but at, at the level I think I should be able to contribute and that's what I fear about the end end product of of, of this um, so it sounds all great but but I'm I'm trying to trying to reconcile how would how would this then help me um, actually be able to contribute which is the thing I actually want to do. So, Carl, this is a great question, and I'm happy to answer it. So, the, the first thing is, um, I would say the most the, the we have such an incredible community of people who've exactly achieved the transition you're talking about. So, everybody comes in, not like the majority of people are coming in exactly like you are, and they're looking at exactly the same jobs, and they have successfully made this transition. So the main thing is this is a very supportive, helpful community. So if you are like, well, I'm in this country and I want, I'm like, now that I've learned something about the climate, I feel like I'm interested in these, you will find folks in this community who can meet with you one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, here's how I did it. Okay, so that's mm. the, the first thing. Then we also have this whole group of like preferred employer partners, et cetera. So we've got like a whole like kind of inside like connections into organizations. And we have so many organizations that have like hired out of us. Like there's some companies that have like literally hired like eight people out of Terra. So like one after another, after another. So they like, we, we've we got we've got some really good like connections there. Uh, we run an alumni panel. So alumni come back and they tell you, okay, this is how I did it. Yours. We run a CV workshop. So we're like, well, if you, you know, this is how you kind of like should, think about how you, you, you position yourself, et cetera. The, but then also we run the spe special careers course, which is four extra weeks entirely free where you can like really just work with a group of peers who are exactly on the same pathway. And we have one person whose only job is to place you honestly, like in a job. So like, that's all she's trying to do is like place you all. So um, we are like pretty, uh, and this is by the way, a, a new thing that this last thing that I mentioned, I don't think Rich or Gita have like, she's just come back from parental leave. Um, so uh, now the other thing I want to say is um, that uh, um, the, uh, we, um, I would say that when folks first make this transition, mm -hmm. usually what happens and not always, okay, but usually what happens is you first kind of go you lead with your existing skills and you shift. So you, it's very hard to shift your skill set and your like domain at the same time. Mm -hmm. But you have yeah. to think of this as a journey for the rest of your life. Like this, you know, the next job is not the end of the climate work you're going to do. It's the it's the first thing you're going to do. So it's like it, it that so that you know the, the the first question is like we help you figure out okay where is that adjacent space that is still of interest to you, you know where is that adjacent space and what are those opportunities there. And then like the, once you've made that transition, like we've had folks who've gone like from like sales, like literally sales, you know, to like sustainability in the same organization to like then becoming a sustainability consultant, right? Like, so that's pretty special, like that's a pretty specialized role. So we've had now folks do two transitions, like basically, um, you know, because we've been around now for three years. And so uh, like it, these things like, you know, one thing, the one big secret about this space is there's a massive shortage of talent, okay? Like there are a lot of jobs out there. There's a huge shortage of talent. Like, um, so you're already in pretty good space. Like if you're thinking about this and you've got some professional experience, like, you know, it's a good space to be getting into. Like certain sectors are growing like you can't believe, like clean energy is bonkers. Like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Like Sandran alone, I looked only at sales and retail and there were 800 jobs, right? For one solar company. So that's in the US. And so like, actually you're coming at it from a position of strength. Like the reason we run job fairs is because employers can't find talent. So, you know, yeah. why are they coming to our little company to run job fairs? They, they can't find the talent. So, uh, a, I, so I just want to like, yeah, yeah. go ahead. So yeah, no. So I read an article the other week. So I mean, the, there's a phenomenon where where there is a lot. So, so there's a lot of need. But I I, I read that in this article that that um, you know companies and organisations are but trying to find the experienced people though, like who because then they can come in right and put in these solutions because they already have the domain experience. But yeah, we need a lot more people because you need to scale the effort. Otherwise, we'll never make progress at scale. Right, so it's kind of count. It's, it's kind yeah. of contradictory in a sense, right? Because the, then, the, then the actual the actual challenge is, I think, what you're trying to address, 
right is how do you how do you bring more people into it into this effort right versus versus companies chasing this small this you know too small subset you know of, of very you know of kind of experienced people who can hit the ground running right and that's that's the contradiction in this i i, I see you know that's that's kind of a, a little bit challenging but you're absolutely right. And one thing I one thing I have noticed when when I talk to fellows like who've actually got gotten jobs, like the one thing they say is that so the first is getting the interview, but the one thing they say is like once they're in the interview, they can speak knowledgeably because really this is a boot camp. Like if you pay attention to the content, you are going to be an expert as much as anybody, honestly, with a master's degree. Like we have stuck there is, like, if you really go into the content, like you'll know how to do emissions accounting, you'll know how to, con you know, figure out emissions from a, if you want to get into like all the quantitative stuff you can, like you will start the course by building a climate model. Even if you have no quantitative background, this is what your first thing you'll do in the course okay. is you will build a small climate model. So like, uh, like you, you will become an expert. Like if you take this stuff really seriously and you do all the quizzes and you do the assignments, like, there's people tell me over and over that they felt confident in the interviews. They felt confident to speak about it. They spoke, they were able to speak knowledgeably about it. So like, you know, I totally hear you. And this is exactly what, we're, this is why also we provide all the emotional support because it is very anxiety provoking to try to switch your entire career. And the boy, we throw you into the science, like deep into the science when we start, and then we kind of lift you out into the solutions, but like people freak out. Like we've got this one climate scientist. He's a dean. He's the dean of like atmospheric and oceanic like sciences at University of Hawaii, and he's on the Honolulu Climate Change Commission. And that guy, he will he will scare the wits out of you. Like basically, <laughs> he's like our science guy. Like we literally oh, no. have to put up the emotional resilience yeah. workshop like right after his session. Like we go like back to back, like Chip Fletcher and emotional resilience because people are so freaked out after that session. Um, but you will understand it very well. Like while you will understand the basic physics of climate change and, you know, it's a physical problem, mm -hmm. like then you can like assess everything through that lens. Um, so, uh, yeah, our job is to like give you this confidence and give you these skills. And yes, the first job you get is still about you probably want to lead with your skill set. And then mm -hmm. but that's just the first job. That's the first job. Right. And then once you're in the yeah. space, then you advance in the space. Um, so sorry, I see one right. more question, Jocelyn. Thank you. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for, for this presentation. Uh, I, um, I was originally into uh, uh, technology engineering and I transitioned into uh, being an, entre an entrepreneur. But uh, again, we talk about transition. I was trying to make two transition at the same time. I just uh, completed a project management uh, training, uh, but at the same time, I wanted to go in an area where I can, I can really make an impact. So would you, uh, uh, I mean, in a way I'm pursuing two, two tracks. One, maybe one that will look for opportunity to work uh, in a company, but also I'm still an entrepreneur at heart. So I was wondering if you have uh, mentorship that would, guide somebody like uh, myself uh, with my interest and in, in, in my vision? So Jocelyn, great question. So actually, initially, when we first started up, like, honestly, more, a lot of our fellows were uh, entrepreneurs. So actually, like the, 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 we've shifted, like, there seems to be a few more job seekers, like more job seekers now, but there's always a core group of folks who are entrepreneurial. And actually, we have redesigned the assignments right now to be much more focused on these personal trajectories. And we've, we've set up more sessions. So for example, you'll get to meet other entrepreneurs and be in certain sessions that are just like for entrepreneurs trying to do this together. So uh, we are like, we're, we're, we call these tracks, okay? So there's five tracks for people who are coming into the course. The first track is job seekers. People are just looking to get another job. The second track is upskillers. So people who are, want to stay in their job, but apply a climate lens to their job. The third track is entrepreneurs, and this could be in the nonprofit sector or the for-profit sector. The fourth track is actually um, uh, people who want to volunteer, do activism. Sometimes folks are retired, they don't want a full-time job, or they, they don't want to leave their job, they can't leave their job, they want to do something on the weekends or, uh, you know, be politically active, etc. So there's that track. And then there's a small group of people who come in in the summer and the fall, and they tend to be, like, actually looking to apply to graduate school, and they're just trying to get, like, a orientation and like do a better job with their grad applications, et cetera. That's a pretty small group. I don't even know if we like are still getting such folks. Um, 
And actually in that group, I put students. So sometimes we literally get students who are still in college, like coming in. It's not common, but we, we get, I mean, we're not actively marketing to them, but sometimes they turn up. So, uh, so based on your track, you will be provided a whole like set of spe special assignments and meetups and mentorship, et cetera, that supports you on this track. Um, so yes, I would say short, the short like um, answer is yes, we support entrepreneurs. We have a lot of mentors who are entrepreneurs. We have entrepreneurs in the global south. We have entrepreneurs in the global north. We have entrepreneurs at different level, like different experiences. Uh, it's quite well represented in the community and also in the, um, in the mentorship community as well. Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of the short answer. And, you know, I, I think there's plenty of people who come in like you, like they, they've they got certain skills. I mean, engineering skills, for example, uh, they're simultaneously trying to find that like space for application, but they, they also are, you know, trying to like, you know, figure out entrepreneurship. And you said you've already taken some course. You might discover through this program that, hey, actually, there's this other course like, oh, IDEO is offering, or, or there's, a, there's this actually like Techstars has some kind of like a, incubator program you want to go for another incubator program so this might just be the start of that journey for you or you may just figure it all out and like find your team and launch something as well um yeah uh, but we we do support we have a special track that's specifically for entrepreneurs thank you and then the other thing is you might choose to work for a startup just to see as like the first step so you may decide oh actually the best way for me to get into this is to spend a couple of years in a startup and by the way, the companies that are most well represented in our jobs platform is the startups, like, and there is a massive demand for engineers, like um, any engineering skills. So uh, yeah, like startups is like the best represented set of companies in our uh, jobs, like on our jobs uh, um, fairs, et cetera. Climate startups, climate tech startups. Thank you. Sure. Um, any questions, any more questions for the fellows, our fellows, especially for Rich and Gita? I want to see if the, anyone has any questions for them. Uh, we have a few more minutes. Uh, there's no more questions. I can wrap up. I want to say thank you for all of you for being here. I'm just putting the course page here again. There's a discount code, there's scholarships. I hope to see you all in the community. I run several sessions myself. I run two deep dive labs myself. I'm always at the launch event. I'm always at graduation and I do like a couple more just like chat sessions with fellows. I will be there in the course. There's an amazing team. Our fellows, our instructors are amazing. The course like director, everyone is amazing. Everyone's just incredibly kind. This is fundamentally a very kind and caring community. We're not grading you. We're not judging you. <laughs> we have folks from oil and gas here who are trying to get into, figure out climate. Like everybody is welcome in this course. Um, so yeah, I hope to see you there. I'm so grateful to Rich and Gita. Thank you for being here and taking the time and sharing about your experience. I am so happy to see you both again too. Um, it's always great to see alumni. Um, and yeah, uh, if you want to, if you have any more questions, Kirti at Tara two, she's happy to answer your questions. Uh, um, yeah, Jocelyn, you have one more question. Yeah, yeah, one last suggestion. Uh, I, I think. Uh, Sometimes it's hard for me to uh, connect with people that are in the platform. So maybe it'll be a good thing to lead up, to lead the meeting with by, by asking people to who want to connect to volunteer to drop their profile into the chat so that, you know, people can connect. I'm sure, yeah, feel free want, to do for that. Those uh, want, for those yeah, who want. For, yeah, for if folks want to connect, also you can just connect, yeah, in the app as well, like, uh, oh. Uh, that's another place uh, and definitely in the course you'll have a lot of opportunities to connect and get to know each other um so yeah thank you for that and thank you all i will wrap up uh and yeah hope to see you in the course okay thanks so bye -bye. much have a good one thank you